Well, hello and welcome to our remembrance service from the Two Rivers Benefice. Throughout our service, all the things that you need will be shown on the screen and where there are words for us to say together, they will be shown in yellow type. Now, right at the beginning of our service, we're just going to take a few moments to think about why we remember. And I'd like you to watch this short video. Remembrance for me is every day. It became a lot more personal when a friend of mine, a year older, joined the Royal Navy and then the Falklands flashed up. We used to have our instructors come and talk to us and tell us stories and one point I remember really hit home was when I, we were getting told a story by our instructor. He almost lost his life because he stepped on an IED and for that to happen to him and for him to still be here, you realise that there's quite a big selfless commitment. For me it's more, yeah, it's more about the loss of a friend I think and I just take take time that week to think about it, um, keep a picture of him, that's about it. Sadly, in the conflict, Stephen Ford was killed. Uh, and then of course, it's no longer just names on graves, it's actual people we know ourselves. To have a bit of time where you can just dedicate it to remembering people and people that were close to you, or even just people that made basically the ultimate sacrifice. I'm quite proud, not necessarily the decision to join, but of, of the things I did when I was there and the people that I worked with. Uh, quite remarkable individuals. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, to remember those who have suffered in conflict, war and terror, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Amen. We're now gonna sing our first hymn together, I vow to thee my country.
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may, together, live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. And so let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in world wars and conflicts past and present, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of others. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Let us pray. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
Let us pray. Father of all mercies, grant that our remembrance this day may be consecrated for practical service and the world made better for our children's children. Amen. And now let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. And let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Lord God, our Father, maker of all, we praise you for your great work creating the world. Give us the skill to build a society where all may thrive and forgive us when we use your gifts poorly. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Prince of Peace, as we thank you for your life among us, forgive us when we fail to live together as one family. Help us to dwell together in love and peace, seeking one another's welfare, bearing one another's burdens, and sharing one another's joys. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, Lord of grace, fulfiller of humanity, give us strength to face the future and wisdom to learn from the past as we remember those who have given their lives in the service of justice and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let's say together the special prayer for Remembrance Sunday. Lord of the nations, saviour and judge of all, remove from human hearts all bitterness and hate. Grant to those who have died in war your mercy and forgiveness, and bring us all to the peace of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now for our children's story time this week, we're going to watch a video where a number of school children were asked the question, why do we wear poppies? Let's see what they had to say. Why do we wear poppies? We wear poppies because people a lot of people were in the war and they died to save our lives. So they could um, be remembered and be popular for what they've done. You just have to remember them because most of us wouldn't be born if they didn't help. I think it's good to remember the wars. In London, There's it's full of poppies around the tower. 800. 88,246 poppies of the people of the soldiers who died of World War One and World War Two. These are in remembrance of the of the people that died fighting in the war. Loads of people died and all the poppies represent each person that has died. It's important to remember because we could have not been here if it wasn't for them. There were bombs of them and they and they try and they they killed themselves because they wanted to give this country a better life so that if they didn't they wouldn't get the country a better life. Well I know I know about the second world war that uh, there were that that I wouldn't I wouldn't go there because they are throwing bombs everywhere and um they were killing people with their bombs. We thank them for, their, for dying because if they didn't die, 
uh, our England well, wouldn't be a better place. So thanks for everyone for dying. Thank you very much. I mean, we appreciate what you did for us. It was a really bad war, but they, they died for us. They fought for us. They worked hard and they need to be remembered because they fought for our country. Thank you for just fighting for our lives in the wars. You risked your lives for us. If there was someone really wise, they would like stop people from fighting. Well, there were some really good answers there, weren't there? And now for our children's time to sing, we're going to sing the song, Peace, Perfect Peace is the Gift of Christ Our Lord. So let's sing it together. Micah chapter 4, 1 to 5. In the last days the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and people will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The Lord will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. 
Nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading today is from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. This is my third remembrance service this year. The first one was in the deepest south of Essex in North Benfleet. It was in a churchyard and it was on June the 19th and a small group of us met around the refurbished memorial to John Cole, a Grenadier Guardsman who had fought at Waterloo in 1815 and was injured in the battle, but he lived for a while after that. The second service was in a muddy clearing on Putney Heath last month. It was to celebrate the 360th anniversary of the raising of the 1st English Regiment of the Army by the Earl of Peterborough and they paraded on that exact spot. The regiment became known as the Second of Foot, the Queen's Royal Regiment, and today it's known as the Princess of Wales Royal Regiment, the Tigers. We met in the rain, serving soldiers, veterans, cadets, reenactors. There was a Lieutenant General, the Colonel, the Forces Chaplain, the band, and we honored the fallen in the usual way. And take today we meet as we did last year around the war memorials in our villages and in our churches. One of the things I notice every year at every service is that there are no surprises. The words, those rolling cadences are totally familiar. The bugle calls, the poppies, the same sadness reflected as we hear the names read out. The same hymns, the same reading, the same sermon? Let's see. The words of Micah chapter 4 are beautiful. And you know they need to be after chapter 3, which deals with total ruin, doom and destruction that is heading Israel's way. Micah chapter 4 talks of clarity. God's presence will be unmistakable. It's going to be like a mountain that everyone can see. You can't miss it. Now, Julie and I are off to Seattle in the Pacific Northwest of the USA this week, and we'll see Mount Rainier, as they call it over there. Rainier is how it ought to be pronounced. But you can't miss this mountain. It's the only mountain there. All 14,411 feet of it. Now, sure, Mont Blanc in the Alps is 1,400 feet higher, but it's surrounded by other peaks and foothills and lower slopes. 
But a bit like our world today, God is surrounded by so many competitors, seemingly. Other religions, consumerism, apathy. I mean, that's almost a religion these days. Which reminds me, question. What's the difference between ignorance and apathy? The answer, I don't know and I don't care. I'll pause to let you recover from that astonishing piece of humour. But Micah is telling us that there will be a day that will be different. When those who have been trying to find God in the chaos and the hubbub of international tension international trade wars, international armed conflict, will be able to see God clearly for what and for who he is. In verse 1, Micah describes the mountain. In verse 2, he tells us what will happen. Many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. Micah is telling us about clarity, and he's also telling us about consistency. God's ways don't change. The world we live in wasn't God's plan A, but the end result of plan B will be the same. The goal is the same. The creator God back in relationship with his creation, mankind. Because we live in a fallen world, a world from which God has temporarily withdrawn his authority. But he hasn't withdrawn his love. His authority was rejected a long time ago, and it's rejected today. But his love remains. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13 confirms this. If we are faithless, God remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. What a wonderful promise to us that is. And Micah's message to us today is don't be sidetracked by everything you see happening in the world. Don't be depressed by God's seeming inactivity at the moment because the day that Micah has foreseen has yet to come. Now, Micah was speaking nearly 3,000 years ago and he speaks of clarity. He speaks of consistency and he says there will be concord meaning peace. As a young man, I always enjoyed the aircraft spotters collect. Do you remember the author of peace and lover of Concord? We used to watch it fly over our school sometimes. And that's Micah chapter four, verse three. God will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. God will bring Concord. Since Micah spoke these words, Assyria has come and gone. The empire of Babylon, gone. Rome, gone. Holy Roman Empire, gone. Napoleonic France, gone. Great Britain, jury's out on that one. China, Russia. But there will be a day when divinely adjudicated concord will be the solution loved by everyone. And that will mean an end to confrontation and conflict. So great will be the acceptance of God's authority, so clear will be the justice of God's judgment between nations that there'll be no need for treaties, no need for the UN, no need for inspection teams, because Micah sees nations beating their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. This is a very popular picture. It has been for years. We're so familiar with it. Do you know in the North Garden of the United Nations headquarters in New York, there stands a statue of a man with a hammer in one hand and he's beating a sword into a plowshare. A very famous piece of work. And the USSR donated this statue to the UN in 1959, on December the 4th. Yet within three years, in October 1962, the world trembled on the edge of the outcome of the Cuban Missile Crisis. 
So much for the statue. So much for Micah's beautiful words. Didn't work. End of story. Except, hang on, there's a rather vital missing part. You can't have the pruning hooks. You can't have the ploughshare part of the picture unless God is visibly at the very centre. Without God being clearly visible, without God's ways, without God's law, all the other prerequisites that Micah stresses, we will only have swords and spears. Because Micah's words aren't some sort of global buffet where we can pick and choose the bits we like, that has never worked. People try it with religion or faith too. Well, I'll go for the hymns. I love the collects. Um, the bits I love, especially remembrance services, and I'll, I'll be watching the Albert Hall on Saturday evening. I'll keep all of that, but I'm not prepared to let God make the big decisions in my life. Jesus doesn't mince words on this subject. It's God or nothing, he says. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In other words, God is to be at the centre, not self. And that's such a big ask for us these days. How could Jesus demand so much from us this morning? Well, that's a rhetorical question because you and I know the answer. It's because he gave everything for us. And Micah concludes this part of his prophecy with the best bit. Comfort and confidence. When God is at the centre, every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree and no one will make them afraid. No one will make them afraid. Much of our human existence is driven by fear. Fear of shortage, fear of illness, fear of the future, fear of loneliness, fear of others. Everyone will be living within the love of a visible and identifiable God, a God of love. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. There's no fear in love because perfect love, God's love, casts out all fear. And that sounds great. Your own vine, your own fig tree. And in 8th century BC, that was absolute luxury. But Micah's not talking about some egalitarian Marxist ideal of uniformity. He's describing comfort and confidence and as a result, contentment. You see, peace for Micah isn't just the absence of war, an uneasy truce which hasn't addressed the underlying causes of the conflict. This peace is total. It, per it pervades everything, it permeates everything. Even the most ordinary citizen, the most humble peasant, will enjoy its outcome. Well, what does the Bible say about contentment? Hebrews 13 verse 11, be content with what you have because God has said, I will never leave you, never will I forsake you. So what are the marks of someone that is living under the guidance of that kind of outlook on life? What are the marks of the follower of Jesus Christ, the son of the God that Micah speaks for? Clarity, consistency, concord, even though we still live in times of confrontation and conflict. We can enjoy comfort and confidence because in knowing God, we have real contentment. So it's all okay. We just get to leave another remembrance service. Uh, we can relax because Micah's told us we can. But Micah's left the critical bit to the end of the passage we're looking at today. And it's what we do in the meantime. What must we do this week, the week after that, until Micah's day arrives? And the answer's in verse five. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, whatever and whoever they are. And I wonder what particular God our nation is walking with at the moment. But we, says Micah, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God. Yes, walk. No vines or fig trees just yet. There's work to be done. 
we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Well, thank you, Micah. That's great stuff. But is this just wishful thinking on your part? A dream of a man, a holy man who lived nearly 3000 years ago. Is it just a pipe dream? Micah goes out of his way to tell us that this is a statement of intent from God himself. The mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. The Lord of hosts. In medieval times, the word host was used to describe the main body of an army. The scouts would find and assess the opposition and then the host would be brought up and deployed. So Micah's words, Micah's promise to us, is a statement of intent from God, signed off by God as the supreme commander of angelic forces in heaven and earth. And the invasion started, happened 2000 years ago, the D-Day landing in Bethlehem in the form of a baby whose birth we'll be celebrating in just a few short weeks time. And I now invite you to respond by declaring our faith together in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our prayers for Remembrance Sunday. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, May God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. God of infinite mercy, we trust in your good purposes of peace for all your children. We pray for those who at this time face danger in the defence of justice. Watch over those in peril. Support those who are anxious for loved ones. Gather into your eternal purpose those who will die. Remove from the hearts of all people the passions that keep alive the spirit of war. And in your goodness, restore peace among us for the sake 
of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. 
Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. I now invite you to stand, if you're able, to sing the National Anthem, God Save the Queen. So go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.